Well, hi guys, uh, good to have you back. In this little video lecture, I'm going to show you how to create your PCB, your first PCB, and therefore take your prototyping projects to the next stage. So the idea is that although so far we've been learning Arduino and our little electronics and electronic projects are using uh, breadboards and wiring everything together on a breadboard this is obviously not a permanent solution it's good to just try a few things out but once you have a design that you really want to keep um, then you've got a couple of options uh, one option would be to use uh, something like this where you've got the um, one side of this board it's a matrix board one side has got little uh, holes with a little bit of solder around them so you can stick components on one side and wire them together. Still um, a little bit messy. I'd call this a semi-permanent solution. Then if you want to go to something permanent you need to have PCBs. So you need to design a PCB board, send it out to a manufacturer, although this is something that you can do as well uh, in your kitchen or, or your bathroom with uh, a few chemicals. I don't really like to do that because I've, I've got kids around, don't want them to mess with my chemicals. So I create a design, I send it off to a manufacturer and a few weeks later I get a pack of PCBs in the mail. Not too expensive either. So for something this size I paid around $30 and I get 10 of them. So I've got plenty to experiment with. Once I stick all the components onto my uh, newly created PCB, and it looks like that. Right, it's uh, after, and this is before. Right, it's quite a difference. Now, to um, I think that the best way to get started with uh, PCB design is to use uh, fritzing. Uh, I suppose that all of you, or most of you at least, would have fritzing or probably know what I'm talking about if you've been following my course, uh, Arduino SBS. I've been using fritzing to um, design all the breadboard schematics. Um, fritzing contains a capability, it's got a feature that allows you to convert all your breadboard designs straight into a PCB. Um, it gives you two layers to work on, so you've got top and bottom. It's got um, auto routing, which is very handy. Um, at least to, to get started with getting our, our first layout of your connections. Um, it allows you to customize those connections. Um, eventually, you can uh, export your PCB design into a set of files that most um, fabrication labs around the planet uh, can accept and use. So you can make your PCBs for you. Um, later on, once you become uh, a lot more serious about PCB design and you start needing more features, especially things such as more layers and access to components, uh, things of that sort, then you can go to um, applications that are more professional, uh, quote end quote, like Eagle, for example. Those uh, cost a little bit of money, but they do give you um, uh, capabilities that uh, professionals really need. Um, especially when you build PCBs, they've got a lot of components on them. They've got um, much higher density than the kind of electronics that we've been playing around with so far. So with all that said, let's go ahead and have a look at how to use freezing to create your first PCB. Okay, so the design we're going to work on is the one that I showed you back in lecture 79. Uh, it's a power supply for the bare bones Arduino. So you can go back to that lecture to have a look at it and, and listen uh, if you want to understand uh, how it works. But for now, we're not going to worry about really how it works. We're going to uh, go ahead and design it. So I'm going to use this as my starting point. So I've got the voltage regulator, got the two capacitors, and um, the wiring done. Now in, in fringing, you can see that uh, we've been working on the breadboard view, but up here there's a couple of other tabs. There's the schematic view that shows you a schematic diagram of the components. Um, you could ignore that or if you, you, you could uh, just do your design in the schematic view instead of the PCB as well, so those, uh, those views are interchangeable. Um, and uh, then you also have the PCB view. So uh, the any changes that you make in any of these tabs, in any design type, reflect in the other design types. So if I add a new component, for example, here in the schematic view, then that's going to show up in the PCB view and so on. So um, looking at this design, 
uh, in the breadboard view, sorry, in the in the PCB view, you can see, oops, you can see that the same components appear obviously so i've got the two capacitors and the voltage regulator and i've got little lines dotted lines that connect those components in the same way that the components are connected in the breadboard view so these are traces that are not really connections uh, pcb connections here They're just uh, showing where uh, a, a connection should be made now um, I'm not ready to go ahead and, and do the wirings uh, because you can imagine that once this is done uh, you would like to have perhaps a couple of connectors both for the um, uh, input power and for the output power and I would also like to have an LED uh, connected to the output rail so that when power is applied to my uh, power supply uh, then the LED would go on to show me that there is power. So before going to work on the PCB view, I'm going to add an LED in my breadboard. So I'll add a 5mm LED. Just waiting for it to show up. Okay, so let's pick up 5mm LED, uh, yep, that's, that would do, and I'm going to plug it here. I also need a resistor. Alright, so that's a 220 ohm resistor, yep, that would do, I'll plug it here. So then complete the connections. This is the red wire for power. Make it red. And a blue wire, sorry, a uh, black wire for the ground. Alright, check out the schematic and you see that the, the components that I've just added, the LED and the resistor show up. And if I look in the PCB, those two components have also shown up. You can barely see the, uh, the wires. Okay. Um, now something that is not showing on the breadboard is uh, a connector or a jack. I'd like to be able to connect the input power to my power supply using a, a battle jack perhaps. So I could actually, I'll go back to the breadboard and look for it. So what I need is a power jack. So hopefully a 5.5 millimeter. Yep, this would do it. Uh, it's pretty standard. So I'm going to put that I'll put it here. Actually. Yep. All right. So uh, this top uh, jack, you can see it says power, pin number three. So I'm going to connect that as input. So that will go to my input here. Make it red and just uh, adjust it so that it doesn't overlap with other wires. I'm, I'll make it go around. Oops, sorry. It's incorrect. Okay, like that. And like that. And then there's also uh, the ground. So, I think, yep, you can see it says ground pin number one, so I'm going to connect that here, connect black, and uh, tidy up a little bit. Okay, check the schematic, so there's my power jack, and uh, it also appears on the PCB.
Last, um, I'd like to have a, a header so that I can connect uh, whatever device I want to power through this uh, power supply by plugging jumper wires onto the header. So uh, I'm going to look for a generic female header or just generic header. Um, let's see, we've got, uh, yeah, a generic female header, two pins. I'm going to put that just uh, hang in the air here. Uh, rotate it and then just connect that here. I'll make it red. Actually, before I do that, I'll connect the ground and make that red for my 5 volts. Okay, let's check it out here schematic. So there's the header I've just added. And on the PCB, uh, these little holes here represent the header J2. Alright, so I've got all the components uh, onto my breadboard. Um, the next thing I'll do is to tidy up the components, uh, put them uh, in the locations on the PCB that I'd like them to appear eventually. Um, resize the PCB, I'd like to make it as small as possible, the smaller in general, the cheaper my PCBs um, will cost, and then I'm going to start with the wiring. Okay, so I'm going to move that as an output on the right side, and then for on the left side I'm going to um, put the jack on, place the jack. Okay, this is... Uh, one of the resistors, this is the LED resistor. You can see that when I touch one of the uh, lines, the traces, uh, the then fridging, fridging things that I want to actually complete the connection, so it makes the line solid. Uh, I don't want to do that just yet. So I'm going to move that up here closer to the LED. This is one of the capacitors. Just move them around here. Now, I want to put the voltage regulator around here, close to my jack. Um, the capacitor, I'll put that here. The other capacitor, I'll put that next to C3. This is the output, you can see the lines connecting the um, the output header to the capacitors, so I'll put those close to each other to minimize the length of those wires. And uh, here is my LED with its resistor. Okay, now I can get a feel of the size of the uh, eventual PCB. Move that a little bit here. Just I can just click on any element and move it around. So now I'll be able to drag the rectangle that uh, defines the PCB itself and uh, resize it. So I also want to resize, sorry, move the, uh, the writings a little bit closer to the header. Gives it a little bit of extra room. And one, I'll move it down. All right, so it's a little bit better. I'll zoom in, so I can see what I'm doing. Another consideration is that very often you want to be able to um, have little holes at least uh, at the edges of the PCB, so you can use screws and mount them on uh, on a in a box perhaps. So I'd like to have a little bit of space around here at least on two, two of the edges, so I can put those little holes. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Um, yeah, and I think that's about it. Um, this is looking okay for now, so um, I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, I, can, I can continue beautifying my layout and make it all nice and symmetrical so that you end up with a nice, beautiful board. But uh, hey, this is just a demonstration, so uh, I think we're good for now. So, next step is to um, go ahead and do the routing. So I'm going to get Fritzing to auto-route the board first, see what result it comes up with, and then um, optimize uh, this that result. So I'll click on the auto-route button, and then Fritzing starts figuring 
trying to figure out what are the best what's the best layout for the routes all right so that's what it ended up with hmm all right so you can see that it's using two different colors one is for the top layer and one is for the bottom layer and uh, right now this button here controls which of the two layers we can view and we can view both layers from above so if i wanted to just have a look at the wirings on top you can see that the yellow wires are now highlighted the orange wires uh, i can't even select them because they i'm not uh I'm, i haven't selected to be able to view the top layer i can switch to bottom and bottom layer and now you can see that the uh, orange wires are selectable um oh sorry i've got both layers selected okay there you go so top uh, the, the orange wires are selectable while the yellow ones are not most often you want to have at least most of your wirings on the top layer and uh, typically what happens is i use uh, the bottom layer for uh, anything that doesn't fit on top i'll give you an example in a second all right so I'm, i moved back onto the top layer so yellow wires are highlighted just going to uh, tidy up a few things um, just like that just make the routes a little bit prettier um, what else can I do here I just click and oops so I dragged the PCB itself sorry there was a an orange wire it's in the bottom layer so that's not selectable right now um, move that a little bit here to the side I generally don't like to have um, wires too close to pads so this is a pad here uh, I'll be using through hole uh, components which means that uh, each of these things here represent a hole and the pins of the components go through the holes and then I'll sort it on the other side and just to make my soldering a little bit um, less precarious so i don't want to make connections for example between this pad and this wire on the bottom layer i'd like to have a little bit more space between them since i've got plenty of space in this pcb i'm going to click on this button to reveal the uh, the bottom layer as well and for example i'm going to drag this line a little bit to the side to leave a bit more space between the the trace and the pad uh, same thing here a bit more space um, move that a bit further out okay yeah not too bad and move that up here as well all right um Another little thing to show you, if you go to core components, scroll down to the bottom of the list and you see that there are some components you can use with the PCB view. For example, I mentioned the issue of uh, holes, so you can use screws to, to tighten a PCB board onto a box. So you can create such holes by using the hole component. So you just move that onto say in this case the edges of your PCB and um, now this is going to drill this is going to instruct the the PCB manufacturer to drill holes here you can control how big those holes are by looking at the properties in this case this, uh, it's going to be 2.2 millimeters uh, this is going to be the hole diameter you can you can make this a little bit bigger if you like it's up to you 2.2 is usually okay another uh, thing is vias so very often uh, you and you not you may not be able to route a line connecting two pins uh, completely on a single side of the board. So you may need to reroute the same trace from one layer to the next layer. So you can do that to the other layer. So you can do that by using vias. So for example, let's say that I wanted to, that there was an obstruction. There was another wire here and um, I wasn't able to connect uh, this pin to this pin on the top layer only so let's um, delete that um, delete that tra that trace and um, what I could do in that case would be to use a via 
So via is a component that connects the top layer to the bottom layer. So with that, I'd be able to connect um, the pin to the via. Then from that via onwards, you can see that from that via onwards, I've switched to the bottom layer. That's why it's orange. And then from okay, that's exactly what I want to do. So I want to be on the top layer for this first part of the trace. Then once I reach the via, I'm going. I'm moving to the bottom layer. It becomes orange. Then once I reach the second via, I'm moving up to the top layer again to continue with my trace until it reaches the the pin that I want. So. Think of that as a way to jump over obstructions if you have no other choice with your routes. Okay, next uh, thing that you can do here is to add some text on the board, so seal, seal screen text. So for example, I could go and put my name here. So place it where you'd like it to appear, you can say Peter's board. I can change the size by adjusting its uh, width. I'll make it maybe two millimeters. Well, that's too small. Make it uh, 20. Yeah, a bit better. To place it. Good idea is to always uh, print the version of this board, since typically you'd be going through a few different revisions as you find bugs or make improvements. So. Um, Put in a version number, make it 1.0, make that a little bit smaller, make that 20 as well to match. You can do the same thing on the bottom layer, of course. So I can move um, down to the bottom and I could put a little bit of text here. Oh, sorry, I should have changed that to seal screen bottom. So uh, another little message. There you go. Awesome. All right, so you can leave messages around. Uh, back to viewing the top. Um, so we've got the seal screen done. We've got our components placed. We've got our wirings done. Uh, it looks like uh, we are almost done um, what we can do now is to make sure that electrically our PCB is well designed and it can be manufactured so there is a feature if you go to for instance um, routing table you can see that there is a design rules check so always do that before you go ahead and send off your design for manufacturing so check to see that everything is electrically sound so I've got a couple of issues here. Uh, the jack is overlapping with, uh, okay, part power jack J1 is overlapping. Right, I've got wires that are overlapping, so you can click on those so you can see what the problem may be. Um, some of those things are just warnings uh, and uh, they are not really a problem. Got uh, overlapping wires yeah and there seems to be a problem with this particular wire here 361 and 362 361 yeah okay so issues with the jack all right so what i'll do so i'm going to delete this wire first and then reconnect it Okay, um, move the jack in a little bit to see if the problem clears. All right, let's do the check again. Oops, sorry. Uh, routing and design rules check. All right. I've got another wire which is presenting an issue. Oh, that's the same one. 
what I'll do, I think the problem here is the, uh, the component that I chose. I'm going to go back to breadboard view and change that power jack. Let's see, this is the original that I used. Uh, you can see that this, it's got a lot of copper at the bottom which is causing the problem of overlapping with my routes. I'll probably go for this one actually. The, yep, that's, that's much better. Still 5.5 millimeters. Um, I'll use that instead. So I'll drag that here, remove that, and put this one in its place. Okay, so electrically still connected. So this is still uh, This is J3 This is power Okay, and ground. So I'm going to move this wire here to the ground just to be sure I've got the right electrical connections. So back to PCB To find the power jack now it's outside my view. Put that here. Zoom back in. back in place yeah should be okay okay there you go you can see the connections Ooh, that doesn't look good you can see that we've got um, the which one is that the power jack connected incorrectly. I also need to rotate this part so uh, it's like that. Right, I need to fix that. Just delete that part. Whoops. Uh, this needs a little bit of fiddling around. Alright, I'll just go straight from here to here. here to ground. Like back to PCB. All right, that's better. So now I need to connect um, these two together. These two together. So that's power and the ground. Now um, I'm going to move to the bottom layer to make this connection so that there is no issue with overlapping. There you go. Give it a bit of space. All right, let's uh, do the uh, design rules check now. Right. So the electrolytic capacitor, I can see it's highlighting. Ooh, <laughs> obviously I've made a mistake here. So there's a problem here. I've got two wires overlapping and the pad with the wire is also connected. So easy to fix. I'm going to put this wire in a bottom layer. Choose a bottom layer and wire it. And give it a bit of space.
There you go. Okay, design rules check. Okay, now we are ready for production, no problems. Um, another little trick I'm going to show you is it's not really necessary for a design like this because it's pretty simple and um, uh, low frequency, there's no issues with that. Uh, but one thing that you can do is you can uh, use a feature called ground fill. And what ground fill is, is that it it um, uh, will fill the available PCB space with copper and connect that copper to uh, any of the ground pins. So um, if I do that, for example, choose ground fill for the bottom layer, then you can see that the bottom layer now has got ground, uh, has got uh, sorry, um, uh, copper everywhere, and that copper is connected to any one of the pins that are supposed to be grounded. Like for example, this pin here is is grounded, right? Um, this pin here. I can set it to uh, be a ground fill seed, a seed, and by doing that, I'm, I'm telling Fritzing that uh, I'd like that pin to be grounded as well and connected. You probably couldn't see that because it was outside my screen, but uh, let's say um, this pin of the capacitor can also be a seed for the ground, and I can click on that, set ground fill seed. All right, so I'm going to do the copper again ground fill, bottom. All right, so you can see there's little pads now, and you can see this little area indicates that there is copper here, and here, and here, as well as here. So these pins are connected with this large area full of copper. So this whole area is now uh, grounded. Okay, so that's good also for dissipating uh, heat. If you've got any components that are generating a lot of heat, the um, the ground copper can also be used for heat dissipation. All right, uh, one last check because I made a few changes since my last uh, design rules check. One last check, make sure everything's still okay. Yep, and we are good to proceed. Um, the next thing I'll do is I will export, uh, I will go to file and then uh, export uh, for production Gerber. So I want the Gerber RS274X type of export file, which is going to generate, I'll put it in here, in the folder, um, I'll call it Gerber. And it's going to generate a, a series of files. So here it is. So all these files contain all the information that I've um, just created in Fritzing. Um, I will zip it up. So uh, the next step before I actually send this out for manufacturing is to do uh, another check using a website or an online free service called GURP Look. So that is a very handy um, check to do. It allows you to upload your file or your zip file with your Gerber files. And um, once you upload it, you can get that website to tell you if your design is good electrically and, manuf and can be manufactured. It takes a couple of minutes. Oh, oh, hang on, what happened? I'll do that again. So uh, Gerber zip, right, go. All right, rendering. There we go. So um, uh, if if Gerblook was not able to uh, understand your files, then it means that you've got a mistake. It would give you some information about what the problems are. But this, uh, these are the files, the way that the PCB manufacturer is going to see them and find them and load them into the man manufacturing equipment. And uh, as long as all these files are viewable here, then your PCB maker will be able to also see them and make your PCBs. 
So that's about it. Now the same zip file that you uploaded to Gerblook, you can send off to manufacturers like um, this one here, right? Shenzhen to you. Um, looks pretty good prices as well, out in Shenzhen, China. There's uh, OSH Park. These are uh, PCB manufacturers that are good, I suppose, if you are in Asia Pacific areas, uh, if you're in Europe. Probably uh, Fritzing would be a good choice, obviously. You can actually upload your PCB schematics directly from the Fritzing application and they will make it for you. And there's many others around. So I just look for, I go to Google and type something like um, PCB manufacturing and uh, you'll find something that uh, will manufacture that is close to your area. Um, that's about it. So once you upload um, and pay, and typically it takes about a week for them to to do the actual manufacturing. And um, in my case, my PCBs are made in China, so it takes uh, sometimes about two to three weeks after they are manufactured to uh, to arrive in the mail. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm never. I never had to pay for express mail, so I'm happy to wait a little bit longer, but uh, you can always pay for express mail postage if you are in a real hurry. But a little bit of planning saves you a lot of money. Yeah, so I hope this was useful. Um, have a play around with, uh, with ThreadSync and you can see that you can do a lot of really good work, a lot of really nice designs. Just uh, one last thing, um, if you... Uh, uh, progressing really fast with freezing and eventually you f your designs grow so much that you need for example multiple layers so you can have up to 16 layers then um, one choice would be to look at Eagle so Eagle PCB uh, it does have a free version that you can download uh, that free version again restricts you to the two layers only there's a lot of other restrictions but that's the most important one but if you're willing to pay a few hundred dollars for it, uh, I think it's about a hundred dollars as a um, um, as a hobbyist, uh, then you can have up to 16 layers on your PCB designs. Uh, you could probably build a whole computer um, motherboard uh, with, uh, with that many layers. Um, that's about it. Hope you liked it. Let me know if you have any comments.